plastic corners and you drive through the seat of your pants really and the Morgan's a great car around corners so it's a lot of fun around Goodwood. And on pole position that red Morgan driven by none other than Charles Morgan who is the current managing director of the famous Worcestershire sports car manufacturer and the grandson of the founder who started building little three-wheeler sports cars early in the 20th century and the firm still carries on in family ownership. Charles Morgan then on pole position, Stuart Graham the motorcycle TT rider great motorcyclist and a great historic driver these days is in the middle of the front row in his Austin Healey 100S and another Morgan on the outside is the pale blue Morgan belonging to Doug Blaine. So it's Morgan, Austin Healey, Morgan, the front row and an all MGB second row, the green car with the orange stripe is Colin Pierce's and the red one with the white roof is that of Barry Sidery Smith, the uh, famous genuine ex-works Le Mans car. On row three, that silver Mercedes just going through the picture now, the open 300 SL, dubbed the 300 SLS because it's a modified race-going version of the luxury convertible Tourer, which is what the gullwing Mercedes Coupe changed into towards the end of uh, the 1950s to please the American market. And in the middle of the third row, a little red Spitfire driven by one Richard Lloyd. Richard Lloyd, a very successful racing driver for many years, now the man behind the uh, Le Mans team that Bentley ran with such success at the 24-hour race in France this weekend, but he started his racing career in a little red Spitfire, he's found the car again, he's sorted it out, cleaned it up, and he's going racing with it. On the outside of that row, the big XK150 coupe of Charles Fripp. So, a lot of variety in this race, the Morgans, the Healy, the MGBs, the Mercedes, the Triumph Spitfire, the XK150, and further back, Porsches and AC Aces, and as everybody comes into position, it's 10 laps on a track which has been wettened by a shower. It's drying out now, five seconds to go. Here comes the starter, and down goes the flag, and the front row moves as one, and Charles Morgan hanging fire just a little bit in the red Morgan, and it's Stuart Graham in the middle of the front row who has got the lead. No, he hasn't. Stuart Graham is overwhelmed suddenly. Looks as though he missed the change into second gear, and it's Doug Blaine in the pale blue Morgan who takes the lead. Great start by Barry Sidery Smith from the second row in the MGB. Barry Sidery Smith is in second place. In third place now, a recovering Charles Morgan and the Mercedes 300 SLS storming up on the inside goes past Charles Morgan. That's Graham Scott coming through from the third row in the Mercedes. So it's Morgan, MGB and Mercedes. And look at the Mercedes going through on the outside. The Mercedes is up to second place already taking a very wide line into the right-hander of St. Mary's, but is still there in the left-hander. So number 12, Graham Scott, in second place, but moving away, out in front, it's Doug Blaine. Doug Blaine in the Morgan. Graham Scott in the Mercedes. Charles Morgan in the Morgan in third place. That's the red car. And then Barry Sidery Smith in fourth place. What has happened to Stuart Graham? Well, he is behind Richard Lloyd in uh, the... Healy 100S having made a disastrous start. Richard Lloyd therefore very well up. Richard Lloyd now coming under challenge from uh, the recovering Stuart Graham and the rest of the field all sorting themselves out as they come now down into Woodcock Corner. Doug Blaine from Graham Scott and then Charles Morgan and the Mercedes is way off on the grass, gets back onto the road, he doesn't even lift off almost lost the second place but kept his boot in and that has allowed Doug Blaine to ease away a little bit in the lead that's the completion of lap one of ten Doug Blaine the leader and Graham Scott in second place but being challenged now by Charles Morgan as they come down into Madwick for the second time but the Mercedes a big difficult car but a lot of power swerving around with its swing axle rear suspension and now Doug Blaine is going to be threatened by the Mercedes which is getting a run on the Morgan and has the inside line for Fordwater and Graham Scott takes the lead. Graham Scott the leader 
Doug Blaine demoted to second place, and Charles Morgan now challenging Doug Blaine as well. Look at that Mercedes, left-hand drive, healing through the swoop of the right-hander, and off goes the Healy Silverstone of Chris Behrens, which is buried in the barriers. I think he's all right. Yes, he's out of the car, but he is out of the race. And Charles Morgan coming through on the inside of the Mercedes and taking the lead again. So the Mercedes very quick on the fast bits, but Charles Morgan knows if anybody should know how to handle a Morgan. They're on the Lavin straight now. Still Barry Sidney Smith in fourth place, still Stuart Graham fifth, and still Richard Lloyd and the little red Spitfire is in sixth place. That's the top six. And down now into the uh, Woodcut corner come the leaders. There is the second man. The 300 SL uh, Mercedes never really intended for racing at all. He manages just to get the car stopped for the chicane, does Graham Scott. It was, of course, the 300 SLR, a very different type of car that Mercedes raced in the 1950s with a straight eight engine. This is a straight six. And Stuart Graham's moving up. Stuart Graham has gone past Doug Blaine in the number seven Austin Healy. Stuart Graham now third, demoting Doug Blaine to fourth. Stuart Graham, a tremendously skillful driver, so quick on two wheels uh, some years back when he was a Works International Grand Prix motorcyclist and TT winner. Then he went on to racing big Camaro uh, touring cars. And these days he races a Lister Chevrolet in historic racing, as he's been doing uh, here uh, this weekend at Goodwood. And also raced this Healy 100S in the Le Mans legend race back in June. Well, Doug Blaine in the pale blue Morgan isn't far behind and certainly hasn't given up. And the Mercedes continuing to move its way through, but he's about eight and a half seconds behind uh, Charles Morgan. Charles Morgan looking very comfortable indeed on his eighth of ten laps, despite all that Graham Scott can do. Just lapping Nick Savage's little yellow Alpha Julieta TZ. And a lot of tyre squeal from that big Mercedes, very much a touring car, not intended for racing at all, but obviously turned into an effective piece of racing kit by Hans Kleisel, who owns this car and has invited Graham Scott to drive it today. Stuart Graham, actually, in third place, is starting to catch him a little bit. The leader, meanwhile, on his final lap, and a big sideways moment there for Graham Scott in the big Mercedes, and they've got some more back markers to lap. Back markers keeping out of the way, but this could be Stuart Graham's opportunity. Out of Ford Water, down to St Mary's. Is that AC keeping out of the way? Yes. St Mary's, another MGB to be lapped, and Stuart Graham sticking to the back of that Mercedes like glue. He's got Lavent corner, and if he can get ahead at Lavent before the Mercedes can use its power on the long Lavent straight, then he could be well placed on this final lap. Charles Morgan, meanwhile, going down towards the finish as Stuart Graham tries to creep closer. It's going to be difficult for him to get a toe off him down the straight because that Mercedes has a lot of power. There is Charles Morgan in the chicane for the last time. The checkered flag is waiting for him. Another family affair for Charles Morgan, who crosses the start-finish line to win the Ford Water Trophy in his Morgan. And now, what is Stuart Graham going to be able to do? The Mercedes is weaving about. There's Vanessa Finborough's AC Ace in the way, and I don't think there's anything that Stuart Graham can do. He just waves a little hand in resignation. He tried all he could do, but the Mercedes does get the second place. Graham Scott, absolutely delighted, raises his arm aloft, and Stuart Graham has to be satisfied with third place. Very satisfying win for Charles Morgan showing that the product of the family firm was pretty good back then and is pretty good now. It was, uh